Hello, I'm Ellie for edu for java and this is tutorial number 8 of Java Game Programming. This tutorial is called Creating a Sound Class for Our Game. To keep the audio clips of our game, we create a sound class, which will have a constant with an audio clip for each of the sounds we use. These constants are public, so that any object which has access to them can play them. For example, in the ball class, we can play the sound of the bouncing of the ball using sound.ball.play. At the moment, we know the ball changes its direction. Let's copy the code for the sound. Here we are. This is a uh, quite an easy class as you can see. It uses the method new audio clip of applet which we saw in the last tutorial with an URL object which it gets from sound.class.getResource and the name of the file. It's enough with the name of the file because it's the same package as sound and sound test as we can see here. Please don't get confused with this. It is in the package 7 even if we are in the tutorial 8 because at the beginning these two tutorials were only one and I left it like this uh, to not to change all the code. The object audio clips will be created when the sound class loads the first time someone uses the sound class. When are these objects going to be created. It is not very important because they are in the disk, uh, so they're going to be created quickly. Um, the first time that Java loads sound in memory, which is the first time someone calls sound, automatically all the constants are created. These constants are the same as the ones we have seen before, but these are public, as you can see, instead of private, so they can be used from outside with any other class. They can be used once and again. As I told you, when this object is created, it is loaded in memory. And each time we do play, it is reused. For example, this clip ball will be used each time the ball bounces using play, play, play. We don't need to reload it in memory each time. Let's copy the class game. Let's copy also the class ball. We also need the class racket, as nothing has changed, let's copy it from this other package. Okay, now let's see the modifications in game. What we first execute is this instruction sound.backdog.loop. In the constructor of game, when we first run the game, we do sound.backdog.loop. This means that we're going to do an infinite loop to the clip back. This is the first time we talk about the class sound. So it is when the class sound is loaded. This instruction could take a bit because it's going to load all the audio clips, but it's a good place because the game isn't playing yet. Um, in a real game, we could put a pop-up while the game is being loaded. When this finishes, everything has been loaded, so we wouldn't have a delay when, the, for example, the ball bounces uh, because the sound of the ball was being loaded. This isn't, go isn't going to happen. Sound um, back loop starts with a la 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 and here in game over which is when the game finishes the first instruction is sound back stop so the la 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 stops 
Here you can see that the second instruction is going to be sound.gameover.play, which plays the, the game over body. After this, we write the pop up. These are all the modifications of the class game. Let's take a look at the class wall. In the method move, we have to set a sound ball.play but only when the ball bounces. When this happens and this happens and this happens, we have to make the sound. I could write sound.ballplay this. I could write it here and here and here. Instead of, instead of doing this, I've created a Boolean variable named change direction, which I set to 2. This means that it always is going to change direction. If it bounces, this is executed. If not, this is executed. And so on. The last else means that it didn't bounce in any place. I can say that. It didn't change direction, so I change. I set change direction to false. Here I do an if. If I change direction, I execute the sound. I did this to make it a bit more complicated uh, because I could have written each time here sound dot ball dot play here and here. I didn't change anything in bracket. Okay, let's try it. See, it's time it bounces, it makes a sound. Now we're going to make it go. The background music stops and we hear the game over, buddy. We click accept and the program finishes. Okay, uh, this is all for this tutorial. See you in the next one. Bye.